Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Nikki Fenty, aka Nikki Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do with this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspired by dreams.shop. We got everything from crop tops, snapbacks, a little bit of everything for you to get your drip on and add something new to your closet. Okay, today's episode I wanted to bring to all my peoples out there. I just wanted to open your minds up to what's been going down in the workplace as far as the people that really, the jobs that really are meaningful to our communities, our kids, and the people out there as far as their growth. People are losing it. Today we're talking about teachers. I have a lot of friends as teachers. And I feel from my point of view, looking in from the outside, they're not getting compensated for the hard work that they do. And what they have to put up with when they're in the classroom is beyond our imagination. So we're gonna go through a couple stories of some teachers that just quit and some teachers just giving their point of view on what's been going on as far as their mental health and as far as just, you know, just leaving their classroom. Man, I'm talking about this thing is rougher than a divorce. So you guys, if you're new to this channel, subscribe right now. We got a lot more videos coming, a lot more things to open our minds to just the better in life. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made it. What you made, Mickey? Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. All right, guys. So, nope, we're not using the bathroom right now. We're not getting water. It is an important conversation. I really need you guys to be listening. This is not a fun conversation. My husband and I are going to be moving. So this is going to be my last week. So Friday is my last day. One of the hardest days. So, well, you'll have a sub next week, but yeah. And then you're going to have a new teacher and everything's going to be great. But I'm really going to miss you guys. I don't know. Right now. I don't know. And it'll be okay. But I wanted to tell you guys before the week went on so that we know that this is our last week together. And we're going to make it good, right? Yeah. We're going to have a good week. If I can, I will come back and try to visit. So, that is what I needed to tell you. And it was not an easy decision for me to make to leave. And I will miss you guys very, very much. Because my husband got orders for the Navy and we have to move. So the military told yeah, us we have to leave. To my We're moving to Georgia. <laughs> it's not too far, but it's about four hours away. And my, my family lives here, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to visit maybe once or twice if I'm allowed to come back to the school. Teaching broke my brain. It broke my brain. It shattered my heart because I love teaching, but I hate this system. Hi, teacher, quit talk. I quit teaching last week. And it's been a roller coaster of emotions since then. And making this video as therapy for myself because I won't have insurance anymore since I quit, so I can't afford therapy anymore. <laughs> In the American public school system, as I now understand and have seen, it is not a sustainable job. It lasted five years and like 20 days or something like that. I literally had to have my therapist tell me that it was okay to quit. She was like, Tess, you're an adult. You can quit your job. It, to me, it did not make sense. Like I was like, I'm gonna get in trouble. I can't do that. Like I felt like I was gonna get arrested, which I know seems silly, but it's like, 
with teaching, you're not taught that it's a job. You're taught that it's your calling and it's your, it's what you were born to do and we need you teachers. And but in my mind, now I've seen it's all just a facade that they put on you know, into believing that you are appreciated and respected. Teaching is one of the most important jobs in the world. You are some of those first human interactions that these children are having before they go out into the scary real world where everything comes down to money and greed and like sounds pretty negative but don't want to be a part of the scam that America is in terms of at least jobs I don't want my job to be my life anymore I don't want my job to be my personality anymore I have no idea who Tess is or anything without teaching. Being paycheck to paycheck as a teacher. To spend all my money on DoorDash because I had unhealthy habits for coping with depression and anxiety. Basically, they did not accept my resignation. So again, in my head, I'm like, shoot, like I'm gonna have to go back. But no, I do not have to go back. Why do they want someone back that was literally mentally at her lowest? They want that person to be in a classroom taking care of the kids? like. It's just another concrete example of the manipulation put out by districts and the higher up people in the school system. Students are what matters most. That's what they always say, but they don't actually show that they mean that through action. If students and their well-being was at their highest priority, teachers and their well-being would also be at their highest priority. Teaching is a very difficult job. So much out of your cup, so much out of your emotional well-being cup because you are giving and you are giving and you're just constantly go, go, going. When you're not teaching, you're subbing. When you're not subbing, you're doing lunch duty. When you're not doing lunch duty, you're trying to plan all these lessons with these new initiatives and new goals and trying to take data for the sake of taking data. And it's just too much and if they actually cared about their students they would put things in place that helped their teachers mentally emotionally to be healthy and to be at their best since we are the people actually in the classrooms doing the work if they actually cared they would put teachers mental health first is when they do that they are putting the kids first they want me to go back in the classroom when I, I like, it got so bad where I just like, I felt like I was suffocating as soon as I walked into the school building. I was, when, when are things gonna get better? It's like, you see all these statistics about these teachers leaving, but it's like, I, I'm just so upset and frustrated and sad and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know. Y'all, I've been holding the big secret and I guess it's time that I finally tell y'all. So, as you can tell, I'm taking down some of the stuff in my classroom. And I want y'all to know that I finally walked away from teaching. I made this decision after I came to a conclusion that I was really at a standstill. I love what I do. I love my kids. But I feel like I was doing them a disservice as their teacher. There was nothing that the kids could have done to make me stay. I came to the realization that sometimes it's just best to move on. And I think that I just needed a break. So for my mental health, I took a break. Right now in the video, you can see me getting very emotional because the wall is almost clear. And at this point, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I struggled with this decision, did not know if it was the right decision for me, and I literally tossed and turned for nights to come. If you want to be a teacher and you're new to it, there's a few things that nobody's ever going to tell you. You're going to have to find out on your own. And the most important thing that you need to know is your mental health has to be prepared because you're gonna take on a lot of different mental health from a lot of different people and a lot of different personalities. I finally pulled the last thing from the wall and I could not hold back the tears anymore. They were just flying. The kids were asking, was I okay? And in this moment, I think we all were sad and depressed. Would I go back to teaching? I definitely would. I love my kids. I miss my kids already. But this is a decision that I had to make for me because I could feel myself 
losing a part of myself every time I stepped into the classroom. It wasn't goodbye, it was just see you later. The kids understood that no matter what, I'm still human. I had to take a seat and to think about the decision to make sure it was really the right one. But at this point, the kids kept talking to me. They kept crying to me. They kept asking why I was like, okay. And they were crying as much as I was crying. So now it made things worse. Two days later, I finally ended up cleaning out my classroom, finishing up, and this is me saying goodbye. Bye, y'all. See y'all in the next chapter. I'm about to make the biggest decision of my life. I've been teaching for 12 years, 12, and I'm feeling done. Just like many other teachers are feeling, I'm just taking a giant leap, a giant leap of faith. Um, I'm minutes away from declining my contract. Never thought this day would come where I would do this. I love my job, I love teaching, but if people knew all the added things that were in our job, you just mentally, I just can't do it anymore. I'm off to new adventures. I'm literally shaking right now, I'm so scared. Um, as soon as my, my kids leave, I'm gonna hit that I decline it and then send my letter of resignation. I'm in, in shock right now. I don't want to leave my team. But for my mental health, I need to do this for myself. So, my God. Um, it's going to be super weird. And when I say my profession, my profession is no longer a teacher. That's all I've been. Half my life now. I mean, I went to school for five years for this, taught for 12 years, so. <sighs> so scared. <gasps> okay, here we go. I wish they knew I love them dearly and I will miss our class family. I wish they knew I'll be here, their teacher forever. And you guys will always be my students. And I got you a little keychain. And it's our picture. And I want you to hang it on your backpack. And it says, put this on your backpack for second grade. And hold on to it when you walk down the hallways. And Ness says, I love you forever. I'll like you for always. And as long as I'm living, my student, you'll be. And so I made you each of these to put on your backpack and then carry it down to second grade. Okay? And I love you. And I hope that you have a really good year. I'm sorry. And I wish I could be here next year and see you. But I promise I'll try to come see you. Okay, so when I call your name, I'll give you your keychain. And if you want to give me a hug, you can. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ugh. I 
I love you. I love you. Thanks. I love you, Lucas. Juliana. So guys, I need to talk to you about something serious. I need you to put the cup paws down for a second. Okay? No, it, it actually is not. Okay, I... My heart's beating really fast. Um, how do I start this? Please don't tell me something bad. Um... This year was my fifth year teaching and has definitely been the hardest year for me mentally and I had been thinking about all year what to do for my mental health okay and so I decided that this is my last year teaching so I will not be back next year I love you guys so much I do I love you guys so much I do okay I love all of you so much. You have no idea how much I love you guys. I, I, I lied to you. I, I'm sorry for lying about saying I was, I was decluttering. But I'm selling all this stuff because I probably won't be, I probably won't come back to teaching ever. So that's why you see people coming in and buying things and getting rid of stuff because I, just, I can't do it anymore. But this has been a very hard year for me. A very hard year. Sorry. But again, I love each and every one of you. That's why I say I love you guys every day. And you guys have touched my heart. Like, major. And I'm, I'm sorry that I'm leaving. I just wanted to finish the year out with you guys. Yeah, so that's, that's why I have been getting rid of some stuff. I just, I, could, I didn't have the heart to tell you guys that I was leaving. So you made you quit? No, 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 no. You guys did not make me quit, okay? Don't, don't think that, okay? It breaks my heart that you think that, okay? You guys did not make me quit, okay? So no, you, can, you guys did not make me quit. You guys did not make me lose my love of teaching. That, none of this was your fault, okay? This was all me. Do you guys understand? You understand that? This was, no, this was nobody's fault, okay? Mackenzie, come here, honey. Come here. Here. Come here. It's okay. It's okay. Come here. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. I do have an announcement to make. No, I am not pregnant. I've already passed. Um, <laughs> I want to let y'all know how much I love you and how much I appreciated you this year. Shoot, I'm already crying. I am leaving at the end of this room. I am not returning to you. You all are really important to me, and I want you to know that. I'm not coming back. What? I literally only took German for. I don't know. Yeah, I'm crazy. What? I'm already trying not to cry. You're the only class I've cried with. Why are you not coming back? My husband and I are coming. Where? Uh, we're still in the weekend. We can but We can't go to the the school take on that? Um, I'll stay in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to the hall with you. Um, you all are fantastic. And you're what's making it so hard to leave. I have a letter to be sent out to your family's later with some more information. Just to kind of like explain what's going on, but yeah, my husband and I are moving. Um, well, now I have to. I'm gonna drop my own. Now I have to. Drop. No, no, no! Please don't drop. Please don't drop. Also, it's too late. Oh, please don't. Please don't drop. What if this music is perfect? It's amazing. It's so much better. No, because we're all like that. Good things about you is that you know. Gibble's test. <laughs> and like, 
Who knows? Why did, why did this next person think better than me? Don't think about them so much you forget I exist. Nobody can no. do the door. No. All right. I'm sorry to leave you with that. I love I quit teaching. This has been my fifth and final year of being a teacher. You probably noticed that I have not posted in a couple months. I haven't posted since February. I have been... And let me just quickly say, I love school. The experience, the people, just that not having to worry about the outside things in life that just have that war of life after you get out of it. It's just those things you cherish, man. The good old days. I've checked out and mentally and emotionally done with this job. I'm leaving and it, it wasn't a decision that I have taken lightly. This is a decision that I have been thinking about all year. This year has been extremely challenging for me. I'm not sure if, for those of you who are not in education, are aware of what's happening in schools, but it it's not easy. I don't I don't think people truly understand what teachers are going through. Lots of children are are not told no at home, which makes my job extremely difficult when it comes to having them hold accountability for their actions and their mistakes and following directions and keeping their hands to themselves. This year, I have been cursed at by both students and parents. I have been hit, punched repeatedly. And what hurts the most is the lack of support from the families when you are telling them and explaining what their child did. Instead of asking you, are you okay? Or my child did what? They ask you, well, what did you do to make them upset? Or are there cameras in the room? The behaviors that I have had to put up with this year are behaviors that I have never experienced as a teacher this so far. I have cried so much, more than I have. Like with all my teaching of years combined, I feel like I have taken off so many days from my mental health because I have not been able to mentally, mentally or physically bring myself to school. Education is not in a good place right now. It's, it's really bad. I have so many stories that I could talk about that I will be posting later, but it's time to go. It's time to go. Again, this was not an easy decision, um, but I do feel that it is necessary for myself and my own mental health. And it, it does break my heart that I am walking away for something that I went to school with and had so much passion for but that passion is gone. I parent more than I do teach. I'm gonna leave that at that. But I am excited to announce that I will be starting a new job at Heartland Church this July. Um, I will be working as their digital communications coordinator and I'm very excited for this opportunity. I'm excited to try something different and to start a new passion. Breaking news, this teacher's video titled I Quit is going viral. And it pretty much explained why I quit as well. Check this out. It's the first time that I quit in the middle of the school year. This is also the first time that I put myself first when choosing between teaching and taking care of myself and my family. As most of you already know, education as we know it is in a crisis. Teachers are leaving left and right and a lot of them won't disclose what those reasons are. But I'm going to tell you what mine were. Teachers are expected to do everything like counseling, teaching, measuring growth. And at the high school level, I had to do that for 150 students. 
I love my students dearly, but all of those Mendes were stretching me to the point of near mental instability. And on top of that, it's really hard to have the support of the people who should have your back. To my students, please continue to follow your dreams and know that Ms. Richard is still rooting for you. I mean, hats off to this former teacher for putting herself and her mental health first and walking away from a profession that takes its own professionals for granted. Because teachers are expected to do way too much. Some teachers are working 80, 90 hours a week, developing anxiety problems because they're getting micromanaged by their administrators. They get no support from the principals, no support from the parents. They get horrible pay and they get treated horribly by the students. This is why so many teachers are just up and leaving, you know, in the middle of the year. Because many of them, just like me, realize it's just not worth it. Most students see us as a joke. Administrators could walk into your class, see a room filled with students not listening and blame the teacher for it. We could work 90 hours a week and they can still give us the same horrible paycheck. And we are just sick and tired of the cycle of abuse year in and year out. I've talked to so many teachers and they cannot believe the state of education today. They can't believe that schools worry more about attendance quotas and funding than actually teaching students. They can't believe that they would throw good teachers under the bus just to save a few dollars. Teachers are being bitten, punched, scratched, made fun of, being memed. And you could say, oh, you get all these vacations. But most teachers are working during those quote unquote vacations because they don't make enough to survive. Do you honestly believe that these teachers are quitting their job two weeks into the school year because they're not getting paid enough or because the politics that they're dealing with from outside of the classroom is too much to handle? No, that's not the reason. The reason why they're quitting is because these kids are mean and they're making the classroom a war zone and they're getting zero support from parents at home and from admin on their campus. This 100% stems from the stuff that they have to deal with day in and day out from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. inside their classroom. It's the stuff that you have to deal with inside your classroom that makes you burn out and makes you never want to come back. I understand that so many of our kids are dealing with rough lives at home and are dealing with trauma, dealing with mental illness, dealing with learning disabilities. All of those things make it difficult to thrive in school and I understand that. But the problem is, is that all of those things are no reason to treat other human beings like a piece of garbage. Regardless of your opinion of teachers, most teachers that I know wake up every single day excited to teach whatever lesson that they've spent hours planning and creating. And they want to have a meaningful experience with the students in their classroom. They want to have a good day. And I know speaking for myself, I woke up every day praying that it was gonna be a good day, praying that the kids that I had that day were gonna be as excited about the content that I was ready to present as much as I was. And most days, that is not what I got met with. On the daily, teachers are getting cussed out, spit on, hit, flipped off. Their equipment is getting broken and stolen. There are bullies in class that are relentless, not just to their own fellow students, but to the adult in the room. Imagine if you had to deal with that at your job. I'm speaking to non-teachers right now, right? You would not put up with that. You would stay somewhere where you were treated with respect and you knew that you were safe in your work environment. If someone came every single day to your job, bullied you, hit you, cussed you out, rolled their eyes at you, treated you like you were nothing, like you were garbage. You wouldn't want to come back either. You would put in your two weeks notice. But for some reason, so many people believe that we signed up for that, that we signed up for that because that's a part of teaching and that's just how kids are. I made the decision not to return to the classroom this year and I haven't been in a classroom for months now and I still have nightmares trauma nightmares on a weekly basis about my former classroom and my former students. And yes, it is a parent and an admin problem just as much as it is a kid problem because the difference between now and 20 years ago even is that 20 years ago when you would have a kid cuss you out, hit you, 
smack other kids, ruin your property, steal things off of your desk. There was going to be somebody on campus that was going to back you up and find a solution. But now that's not the case. Suspensions are down because they want those numbers down. They want to look good. They're not suspending kids for getting in fights and being violent in the classroom anymore. It's just not happening. Even in the early 2000s and 2010s when I started my career, I was assured that if I called a parent to tell them about what was going on in my classroom with their child, they were most definitely going to say, I am so sorry, do what you need to do. I'll talk to them when they get home, right? That doesn't happen anymore either. It is a parent problem because we're getting met with the same attitudes that we see in the classroom that we're seeing at home from parents. Your doctor or nurse, somebody comes up to your nurse's station and starts yelling and screaming, throwing things, cussing you out, calling you names, what do you do? You get to call security and call a code violet. As teachers, we can't do that anymore. We try, but then the kid gets sent out of the class, they are given a snack, and then five minutes later, they're back in the classroom ready to terrorize somebody else. There's always going to be only one adult in the room and 30 kids and as soon as we put our attention on the one kid who's causing the disturbance and the violence in the class then everyone is going to turn to us and say well why aren't you looking after the other kids why aren't you doing your job and teaching these kids what happens when somebody else starts doing something they're not supposed to do it's a lose-lose situation so who wants to deal with that at work of course these young teachers who are just now stepping into the profession are done with it after two or three weeks they realize that they don't have to deal with that behavior they don't have to deal with that disrespect and there's another way that they can make their money let me just speak about houston isd for a second because that's where i came from and that's what i advocate for because i still care very deeply about that school district teachers at houston isd are not quitting their jobs right now because of the crap they're having to deal with from their superintendent and the fact that libraries are being stripped away from campuses that desperately need them again i would say that most of the teachers that are dealing with those issues are strongly strongly urged from within to stay in those positions to advocate for change in that situation those are not the reasons that they're quitting it's the kids and the behavior that they are dealing with because they are not scared of consequences anymore in fact if something happens in the classroom a group of kids is more likely to pull out their phone and start recording it and laughing instead of helping the situation. I know the last thing most people want to hear is a teacher saying that kids are the problem, but what else are we supposed to do? How else are we supposed to tackle this situation? Behavior issues are at an all time high right now and nobody wants to admit it because then that's saying that, oh, those poor little darlings, you know, they're suffering out there in a world that's chaos. What are they supposed to do? You know, you're supposed to love them through it. We are asked to deal with so much abuse on a daily basis. And because they are children, somehow it's okay. And for those of you that don't have to deal with the behaviors that I'm talking about, you are lucky because that means that you have admin on your campus that not only support you, but also have systems in place to tackle this sort of stuff. You really want to know why teachers are quitting all across the country and there's a teacher shortage? I'll tell you why by telling you a short snippet of my day today as a teacher. One fight, four behavior charts I had to fill out, got invited to two additional meetings, and got told that I should be thankful for the aid or paraprofessional I do have in my class as I wasn't supposed to have them in general, even though there is a large population of children that need extra help in that class. And the class size of that same class is 30. But don't worry, I got a pizza party and got to wear jeans today on a random Tuesday. So I should be super thankful for that. If you want teachers to stay, Give us support from admin so when things go wrong, there's support, and give us more support in our classroom so we can help these kids learn. And this is one of the reasons why I quit. After a degree, after clinicals, after five years of teaching, 
one of those reasons is why I quit. And what had happened was I had a difficult student who he would come in high, he would sleep all class, period. Wrote him up, wrote him up, wrote him up, admin did absolutely nothing. To a point to where some admin were deleting my referrals, deleting them. I would go back in and they would be gone for multiple students. And my last straw was the same kid. Um, we were about to read. The audio was for 10 minutes and 16 seconds. 10 minutes and 16 seconds, I was asking students to put their phone away. And I kept asking him and he wouldn't oblige. And he turns around to me and he says, you annoying as fuck. That day I put in all my sick time. I put my two weeks in. I walked out. I ain't been back since. My stuff's still sitting in that desk. Y'all can kiss my ass. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. Okay, a couple takeaways that I get from these conversations. Number one, teachers need to get paid more. The moolah. People need more money in these times to even survive and even to feed their families and live comfortable. That's number one. Number two, teachers go through more than we think they do. Having the stress from a student that's, have, that's stressed at home to take on their mental as well as try to open their minds to teach them something. And then to have their parents with a mentality that they don't even trust a teacher or anyone. So why are you putting your kid in a school if you don't want your kid to be disciplined by a teacher? It's just a whole lot. You guys leave your comments down below. Let me know how you feel. Are we being compensated for the things that we have to deal with in our everyday lives? Leave your comments down below and I'll get back to you. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel.